From Our Family to Yours, Homemade Homeschoolers presents the HMHS Podcast Network, bringing family-friendly fun and educational audio and video from the past and present. To find out more, please visit us at hmhomeschoolers.com. The history of civilization is the story of man's tireless, never-ending search, that which is always beyond his grasp. Where's my new golf ball? <clears throat> From the very dawn of time, man has tried to extend the range of his vision, to pierce the unknown, to learn what lies ahead. The caveman, exploring his mysterious world with the aid of a torch, a hardy pioneer pushing westward through the wilderness, scanning the distant horizon. The sailor, perched aloft in his crow's nest, constantly alert to the dangers of the sea that lie ahead. So man moved forward through the ages, reaching out toward new goals, ever probing, ever seeking, ever searching. I paid two dollars for that golf ball. With the coming of the scientific era, man's ability to increase his range of vision grew by leaps and bounds. Every day brought new inventions, new devices, all helping him to see better and farther than ever before. I'll find it if it takes all night. In the field of aviation, perhaps more than any other, the need to probe what lies ahead is most pronounced. Pilots in the early days had to depend solely on their own eyesight to bring them safely to their destinations. But as instruments were developed, their range of vision was steadily increased. The gyro compass operating independently of the Earth's magnetic field. Two-way radio, supplying direct contact between air and ground. The artificial gyro horizon, telling the pilot when his plane is horizontal under blind flying conditions. Voice radio communication, automatic direction finding equipment, enabling a plane to home to any audible signal. High frequency navigational systems, and now, at last comes the newest and greatest addition to this impressive list. Radar. Radar? Why, yes. Well, that's a new one on me. I thought radar was strictly military stuff, you know, for bombers and battleships. It was originally, but now Pan American is installing radar in its passenger planes. No kidding. I bet it's pretty complicated stuff, huh? Not really. You see, the whole thing is based on the echo principle. Echo? Yes. Suppose you were on a mountaintop and... Oh, wait, I have a better idea. Let's put you on a mountaintop. Now, would you mind shouting something? Okay. Good. Now, let's see what happened. The sound waves of your voice traveled out in all directions. Part of these sound waves hit the mountain and were reflected back just as light waves are reflected by a mirror. Now, suppose we wanted to measure this distance. We know that sound waves travel at about 1,000 feet per second. So, let's ring a bell and count the seconds until the echo returns. Six seconds which means that the sound waves traveled a total of 6,000 feet out and back. Well, the principle of radar is exactly the same. But instead of using sound waves, we use radio waves, high-frequency ones called microwaves. Knowing their speed, we can measure distances just as we did with your echo. Well, do radio waves go fast? Very fast. They travel at 162,000 nautical miles per second, 
in other words in the space of a single second a radio wave could go seven times around the world that's traveling this radar stuff must take plenty of fancy equipment you bet it does airline radar sets consist of five very intricate parts the transmitter receiver the antenna the synchronizer the plan position indicator or scope and of course the control panel the antenna located in the nose of our plane is covered by a fiberglass shell called the radome. This shell is transparent to our radar beam. The scope contains a tube like that used in television sets and acts as a screen on which we see our radar picture. Standard installation provides two scopes, one for the pilot and one for the co-pilot. Okay, so how does it work? Well, let's look at our parts in diagram form. The synchronizer generates timing impulses called trigger pulses at the rate of 400 a second. These are sent to the transmitter and the scope, both at the same moment. The transmitter, in turn, sends a short pulse of radio energy to the antenna. This pulse travels from the antenna along a narrow beam. At microwave speed, the round trip to an object 150 miles away takes less than one five hundredth of a single second. Now let's get back to our scope. The scope translates this pulse into electrons, which cause a small luminous spot to appear. Each new pulse is deflected, so that a steady flow of them keeps moving to the edge of our screen. Actually, they move so fast that they create the impression of a single, almost invisible line, which is called the sweep. Now, let's look at our radar antenna. See that reflector? It's a giant addition of those found in flashlights, and it's used for the same purpose, to concentrate our beam. This makes the beam pretty narrow, so in order to get the greatest coverage, our antenna turns slowly in a 360-degree circle. The sweep on our picture is coordinated with this, so that both beams move together. What's that dark wedge at the bottom? That's the shadow cast by our airplane itself. Well, what happens when the beam picks something up? When something appears in our beam, the microwaves are reflected back to the antenna, then to the receiver, and finally to our scope. The radar beam and the sweep are so matched that an object picked up by the beam appears in an exact relative position on the scope. Remember that our sweep line is continually revolving in time with the beam. As it passes over the face of the scope, it literally paints a picture for the pilot to study. Our sweep is set so that the aircraft heading is always at the top of the screen. Now, we add a grid for bearings, and some rain circles to help in measuring distances, and our story is complete. 